You ready? All right. Where am I? There's the plank. Hey, cows. Oh, hi. You all are catching us on moving day. We're getting these cows out of their winter paddock and hopefully out on green grass. Weather's starting to turn on us. We're not so wet here in the Midwest. So you're gonna come along with us as we uh, get them away from this and get them on green grass. Um, we use modern technology. We have wood chips and uh, bedding to keep the odors down and all the manure. But at the end of the season, in the winter time, it, it does have a tendency to get a, to get a little smelly. And these guys are gonna be very excited to get it out of the pasture. You ready to load? Let's see how good you're going to be. In studying the Hebrew, I've come across two amazing words. In Hebrew, everything is pictures and imagery. And in the West with English, it's just a definition. But in Hebrew, they use imagery to do this. And then two of the words I've recently come across is, um, first one is anger. To us, anger could be a bunch of different things. But in Hebrew, it literally means like flared nostrils of a, of a bull or a cow. Hopefully these guys aren't gonna to get too angry with me today. And the other one I was looking at is um, stubbornness. And to, to us in the West, in English, stubbornness can mean a bunch of things, but in Hebrew, it literally means stiff-necked. Um, just like you're, a farmer's going out to his oxen to put a yoke on them for the day's work and the, the oxen won't let him put the yoke on his neck. They're stiff-necked, so hopefully anger and stiff-necked isn't a part of my, my day to day, but they should be okay. But one of the other words I was studying in Hebrew is ba'ash, which means a stench or something that emits a very, very strong odor. And this allows for us to keep a lot of that odor at bay. And behind us, you can see a massive pile of wood chips that we have hauled in here to to be able to do this all winter. Hopefully these guys listen here. I don't want to get them too riled up or too angry. They wouldn't hurt me, but if they get agitated, it makes it harder to load. You too. Oh, yep, there we go. Yep, right on in. Yep. That was easy after I had it set up. gate shut so they don't run out on me. The cow should love getting out here in this pasture. It's They're just going to be here for a little bit before I get them out on the other pasture, but it'll be great to get them out of that winter bedding area that was starting to uh, smell a little bit. And that's the word we've been talking about, this ba'ash, this emitting a very strong odor, or as we refer to it here out in the country, just fresh country air. But this word shows up in our text a lot. We have it, um, first time that I was studying it is, is the story of the Exodus when God comes in and issues the plagues and the, the Nile River turns to blood and the consequences of that, all the fish die in the river. And imagine floating dead fish on a river of blood that had to be a tremendous smell and the second time is right after that is talking about when moses goes before pharaoh and says let my people go the children of israel look at moses and says what have you done may god judge you your actions have made pharaoh now look at our actions our 
aroma and it's become a stank. It's stench, it's terrible, it's bosh. So much so that Pharaoh looks at us and smells us and wants to kill us. In our modern world, we love fresh air. We have air fresheners in our cars. We have air purifying systems. Cars are now being made with hospital grade air purification systems. COVID's kind of make it where we think about air purification a lot more. And we have deodorants and perfumes and spray Lysols. Our bathrooms have automated air fresheners. Everything in our life, we try to get the, the fresh air as much as possible. But back in their day, back in the children of Israel or the first century, the time of Christ, smell was an aspect of everyday life. You don't have running water. You use a chamber pot. You take your chamber pot filled with all of your excrement in it and throw it out in the street. And you go walk through it. Imagine the smell of that. You don't have dishwashers and Dawn dish soaps and showers, <laughs> washing machines, none of that. So smell was a, a real part of everyday life. And what do you do with it? How do you, how do you survive in a world that is filled with nastiness and strong odors. Well, they, they came up with an idea. I was able to find something that um, is a replica of what they would use, but they would get little bottles and uh, put a little bit of perfume in it and tie it around their neck. Maybe I should have had this on earlier with some perfume. But this would be right below their nose. So it doesn't matter if they were walking through a street filled with excrement or walking outside of town where the city dump was, this odor would get up in their nostrils and then they would hide all the other smells. You haven't showered, haven't used deodorant for a year. It allowed for that smell to happen, but this become a, a, uh, a major commodity in that world because it was so important. In the story of Christ, we see a, a, a woman coming and anointing Christ's feet and breaks a bottle and or pours a bottle on his feet in an anointing way. And Judas can't believe it because if, if, if they could have took that perfume and sold it, it was worth a year's wages. And uh, the text says it was a pound, so about 11 ounces. This is about a two or three ounce bottle. So think about it as, as being $38,000, $40,000 worth just for a perfume bottle. So smell and perfume was very, very important. But, but what happens when you have a natural, sweet-smelling liquid around your neck or in a bottle at home? It does something, it attracts something, and it attracts flies. And you had to be careful because you would have flies crawl down into your bottle of perfume and die in there. And what was supposed to be something that was a beautiful odor and something that was a strong smell becomes Putrid. Ecclesiastes 10 says, as dead flies putrefy in the perfume and baash emit a very, very strong odor, so does folly outsmell wisdom and honor. This foolishness of, of treating God's commands lightly or, or laughing off the commands of God emits a very putrid odor to those around us. But if we obey God, if we follow his commands, then it emits a, a pleasant odor to those around us. These guys ready to get out of here? All right, come on. Let's go. Come on. We'll, we'll cut out the portion where I just chased my cows about a quarter mile that way and had to get them back in. But in the text, it talks about obedient followers of God of, of emitting a, a, a smell of fragrance to those around us. Second Corinthians says it this way, but, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ. For through us emits the sweet fragrance around us about the knowledge of him and to God we are 
the fragrance, the aroma of Christ to them that are, are being saved and those who perish. If we are obedient and living for Christ, we're, we're like these perfume bottles that emit such a beautiful smell that it doesn't matter what's around us. It doesn't matter for it amongst the manure or the the filth of the world. We're emitting such a beautiful odor of Christ to them that that smell it. And those that are being saved can smell the beauty of Christ because of our lives that we're living. I love the verse that says, live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they'll see your good deeds and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So in other words, don't stank. Be obedient and follow Christ to emit a beautiful odor.